Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as you said, my name is Courtney Christian. Um, I apologize if I talk a little fast. I'm a little nervous. It's my first talk. Um, thanks. Um, so I'm just going to talk about a way that two resources in the Angular community helped me and my former team to advance our unit test with hope that it'll make it um, easier with you taking your unit test to the next level. Did that work? No. Cool. OK, so before we begin, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, who am I? Um, up until about three weeks ago, um, I was a software developer at an amazingly diverse forward-thinking company. Um, but getting to the point of becoming a paid developer at my last company was not the road most traveled. Uh, my journey truly began during my year as a service AmeriCorps member, um, where I got an internship at a really awesome Philly dev community, um, and it opened a lot of doors in the Philly tech community. Uh, I began working at my former company um, using Ionic. It was new, so in a way, I grew up with Ionic, and that introduced me to Angular. Um, and clearly, I haven't looked back since. <laughs> Um, over the next six months, I hope to take everything that I've learned over the past three and a half years and create some really cool things with awesome people like you. Um, but enough about me. You came here to hear about advancing your tests, so let's get started. Uh, TDD. In most of my conversations um, about unit tests with developers, naturally TDD comes up. After the preliminaries about everyone's experience with TDD, if there isn't an advent or currently practicing TDD or in the conversation, the majority of the conversation usually hovers around all the reasons that's up to why not to do TDD. So I want to take a little bit of time to talk about it. What is it? Um, as I assume most of you know, it's test-driven development. Um, in short, it's a process built upon um, the repetition of a very short development cycle that goes like this. Um, requirements are turned into very specific test cases, and then the software is improved to pass the new tests only, or as I like to call it, test first, code later. This is opposed to software development that allows software to be added that is not proven to meet requirements. Uh, Kent Beck, who is an American software engineer credited with having developed or rediscovered the technique, stated that in 2003, TDD encourages simple designs and even inspires confidence. So if it's that simple and it inspires confidence, why aren't more people doing it? Um, here are some of the answers that I often hear. Time or client deadlines. Uh, return on investment isn't proven with TDD. Management or the business team might not go for it. Uh, your team structure isn't ready or there's a disagreement in the process. Um, if you're a freelancer, maybe self-discipline with doing this process and slow build process. It could take some time. And my favorite is, if I don't have the requirements, I can't write the test, so I can't do TDD. Um, but the best explanation that I found about why is this one. Um, the reason it is so hard for developers to imagine TDD working is because software design is an iterative, discovery-driven process. This is a quote from an article linked to the bottom of my slide. Um, where Eric Elliott, on his third of five misconceptions about TDD, states, you have to write all the tests before you start the code. He goes on to say, so is building a skyscraper, by the way. Contrary to common belief, architects don't design the complete skyscraper before any work begins. He then continues to compare the TDD process to building a skyscraper, and it is the best analogy um, that I've heard yet. Each step to building a skyscraper is a unit test in itself. For example, surveying the landscape inspecting the ground, going beneath to see if there's a problem that needs to be worked out. The process is very exploratory. You try something, it fails. You try it a different way, it succeeds. But he wraps up his third point by saying this. If you wrote every test up front before you wrote a line of implementation code, that would hinder the exploration process. And that's not how successful TDD works. Instead, you write one test, you watch it fail, you implement the code, you watch the test pass, and then you repeat. And another really cool quote from his article is, perfect is the enemy of good. Um, so with all that being said about the process, what exactly is a unit test? It's the small accessible part of software that usually has one or few inputs with a single output. Unit testing uses the white box testing method, which is where the internal structure, design, and implementation of the item being tested is known to the tester. Each unit test could isolate and exercise specific units of your code. It goes a little something like, nope. 
I missed that slide, sorry about that. <laughs> um, unit tests are set to increase confidence um, in changing and maintaining code. So it makes your code more reusable, develop faster, and debugging easier. So let's get into writing a specific unit test. The one that I'm going to talk about today is on push. So um, what is change detection? Let's say that you have a really big list and you want to configure it and only update it when itself update itself when it changes. This can be done by updating the component change detection strategy on OnPush. Now I'm going to tell you a quick story of how my former team found one solution and then kind of another to test this. Um, so the two references that we used as a team uh, were Julia's references and then later on Asim's. Um, the first time my team tried to test change detection components, we used the testbed.override component and set the change detection strategy to default. Um, so because, like I said earlier, I'm no longer with my company, I can't exactly show the code that I was going to show, so I'm going to use Julia's reference to demonstrate our first attempts and to show what we learned in a more simplified way. Um, so this is, there it is, a simple component with a change action strategy on push. We're trying to test that component, that the component renders the correct ID in the template. At first, our tests were failing because we weren't aware when the Angular first loads, there's no change detection. We soon discovered that Fixture is a wrapper for the component's environment and allows us to control things like change detection. So to trigger the change detection, we simply call the Fixture Detect Changes function. There's my arrow. Um, we brought us, what brought us to this reference was that our tests were failing because we discovered originally that the fixture detect changes was only working the first time that the change detection strategy on push. Um, through Judo's article, we discovered that the testbed provides a way to override the component metadata with the override component. Therefore, we can override the on push with the default change detection just for testing. Um, but this couldn't be a long-term solution, so we kept trying things for the next build. Um, and we later updated and then discovered a Seams tutorial and restructured our test to allow for other um, examples. Is that going to show? Yeah. Um, so this was the original one with the default. Um, yep, and I, that's it. Um, so I hope that this highlighted uh, TDD unit tests and testing a little bit more advanced components like change detection in a better light. And I also hope that it shows how the references from the Angular community can be tremendously helpful along the way. Thanks. <laughs>